All right, today's video is on the different types of regulators because I encounter a lot of different types of regulators. You know, as you do, as you know, I do orifices and a user on the other end is going to have one of these types of regulators, generally speaking. Okay, now this is the most common type and this is a, you know, a, a propane regulator that you find on a barbecue. It's a fixed regulator, so it can't be adjusted, uh, and it does have what's known as this QCC1 connector that connects it to the propane bottle, okay? The next most common regulator that I encounter is this one here, which is, you know, your standard, uh, well, it's made by Chen Fong, but there's a number of different manufacturers that make it, but typically, this is the most prevalent manufacturer that you're going to see out there. It's a regulator that can be adjusted okay so you can take off uh, this cap here usually you got to use a dime or a penny nothing else will fit in that slot or a screwdriver okay and the cap comes out and it can be adjusted okay so in this case the cap houses a plunger that pushes either pushes down on this spring or not the spring pushes down on a diaphragm, and that's how it determines what the what the water column is, okay? This thing is rated at 5 inches of natural gas water column and 10 inches of propane, okay? Water column is a relative measurement of the amount of gas that goes through a regulator or the, the amount of pressure relative to the environment. So at, t at sea level, you're going to see 5 and 10 inches of water column here, okay? Um, there are adjustments that need to be made for out things at altitude or below altitude uh, and we're going to get into that discussion a little bit later because that's what these other regulators are all about okay this cap here plunger okay it's set right now on lp as you can see it says lp there right there and i'm trying to get that in focus okay lp if you take the cap out, now typically you pull the cap out and then you stick it back in the other side, but this one here, you have to screw it in, and that's just the kind of the screwball nature of getting parts from overseas. They're not always consistent. But anyway, this one here, you flip the cap over, bam. Okay, now I'm sorry, this is, this is the LP side. See how the LP is straight up now? When it's on LP, this plunger is going to be plunging on that spring, okay? On the other side, let's flip it back over. On the other side, when it's not pushing against the spring, it is set up for natural gas. And the way to know that is that you can read this NAT and the, the, plane, the spring is not being plunged on, okay? This will go back on here, okay? Screws back on there. You know, you hand tighten it with a with a coin, and you're done. Okay, so that's your typical. These are your most. These are your most common regulators. Okay. The other types of regulators. Okay, we've talked about how this one can be changed. How this one can't be changed. This one has to be swapped out in favor of this one on a barbecue that has a less than 150,000 BTUs. There is a limit to this regulator. If you notice the size of the body, that restricts the amount of flow that it can actually give you. Okay, these bigger regulators, these are more seen on commercial appliances or can be used on commercial appliances. So I'm gonna take this one out of here. I'm gonna take this one out of here and we're gonna talk about the other, the other regulators, okay? So, you have a regulator made by Maxtrol, okay, the RV48L, okay. This one here also has a lid, but it cannot be changed from one gas to another. If you notice, the rating is PO 5 inches to 12 inches. That means inches of water column, okay. This is a propane regulator. The native pressure that this, and by the way, it shows here vent, right? 
that means that gas shoots through that side. Oh, and I probably should show you on this one as well. There's always an arrow to indicate flow on these regulators. In this case, the arrow is this way, so the flow goes that way, okay? And the other one is obvious which direction the flow is going to go on that one. All right, so this one here, 8 inches of water column, that's what it's set at. It's variable from 5 to 12 inches. Anytime you see a PO, you know, 5-12, that means that it can go from one to the other. And it, need, and it can be adjusted. And it will need to be adjusted depending on the altitude that you're working with this one at. Okay? So, higher the altitude, less, less pressure you need from this because the air is thinner up there. It's going to resist the flow of gas less at altitude than it will at sea level. Okay? Because the air is denser at sea level. So, this guy screws off here again with a nickel or dime. I've already loosened it. And... You've got this open part here, and you stick a screwdriver in there, and when you twist it out, it's going to give you more inches of water column. And when you twist it in, which is clockwise, right, screw down, it will give you less inches of water column. It will be more restrictive to the flow of gas going through it, okay? Now, since this is a propane regulator, if you see this, an RV48L for natural gas, it's going to, well, there's going to be a variance on what this figure down here will be because they are very, there are different versions of it. But your typical, you know, prosumer type regulator is going to be rated from three inches of water column, which will say 3.0 or just three inches to 6.0 inches. Of water column and again it'll have a screw inside of it just like this one does okay for adjustment that one will be used for natural gas you have to know which type you have and it will also be marked here with what the what the native you know what it's set at from the factory in this case this one's set at eight inches so it's right between that five and that twelve typically you're going to want something to be set up for ten inches of water column at sea level you know uh, depends on what you're doing. I've set them up for less, you know, but uh, it just depends. But this it, this comes from the factory at 8 inches of water column. And it comes that way for a safety reason because you're going to typically adjust it out and adjust the pressure upwards as you're trying to adjust the low flame setting on a barbecue or a stove or whatever. This is for a stove. This is a six-burner stove. Now, typically when you see this regulator, okay, the most common orifice that you'll see with that regulator, I, I don't I don't think I've ever seen one of them that has this type of orifice that does not have this type of regulator for some reason. Okay. And there are these if you see these orifices, you can just about count on the fact that it's going to have one of these types of regulator in either propane or natural gas versions. Okay. Uh, there might be other orifices that are used with them, but typically when you see these, invariably almost, you're not going to see this orifice without this regulator in either natural gas or propane version, depending on what the stove was made for. Okay, so I'm going to move that aside. Okay, the next two regulators, the most common type, is, your, is a Harper Wyman, okay? Harper Wyman is another type of adjustable regulator that can be adjusted from natural gas to propane. So this does have an adjustment on it. Um, the you know it's stamped on top what the native for each different setting is. It says uh, four four nat ten lp. That means four inches of natural gas. Okay, four nat and ten lp ten inches of water column for natural or for uh, liquid propane. Okay. Oh, and by the way, now that I'm mentioning that, typically these regulators here will give you 11 inches of water column. If that's not confusing, this one's going to give you an inch of water column more than, you know, this guy or this guy or whichever one you're talking about. Okay. Okay. So let's get back to this. This guy here is adjustable. The way it's done is it's got a 
kind of a tang setup, okay, on both sides here. And you can see, if you look at the lid, it will tell you what it's set for, NAT right now, NAT, okay. But if you twist this out, ew. Yeah, let me get the, uh, I'll get this instead. Okay, you take this guy out of here. It comes out. You flip it. See how it says LP on that side? You flip it that way. And now what it's doing, it's pushing on the spring. And it's going to give you your LP. coming out of here at 10 inches at, at sea level, okay? So, just kind of twist it back in there. I'm probably giving you a bad example of how that goes. But anyway, this goes back in there. It gets twisted down. And uh, typically, you got to have a blade going across there. But anyway, it goes back in there, you twist it in, and then set up for 10 inches of LP liquid propane okay this regulator here is a different type of regulator that's a regulator that you'll see on a commercial appliance so typically one of these guys okay the reason I'm carrying this with it is because this is the gasket that goes with it it's actually part of a larger system okay that features an on off button this is for the thermostat, okay? Sometimes it'll have an electric, electronic control, okay? And that's where this actually sits. This sits back in the back like that. This is the LP version of this regulator. If it were a natural gas, it probably would say either 4.0 or 5.0 inches of water column. And I don't know if there's variants. I'm pretty sure there is. There's a, quite a few of these out there for commercial kitchens. This is a commercial kitchen application, okay? Uh, and this is the regulator that controls it. And it has two screws. You pop those out. You take this off, and then you replace it with the other style. And that's how you change this over. This is a master system. So, again, it has an on-off. The gas flow goes through it in a certain direction. It also has a thermostat on there, okay? And it also has an electronic control on there and other features, depending on the type of appliance that it comes off of. That's what you'll see on these. And there's a bunch of different ones. Like I said, they're made by uh, Robert Shaw and Honeywell. So you'll see tons of different configurations on these. Some of them are, you know, and these typically uh, or sometimes we refer to as multi um, uh, multi-stage regulators you know blah 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 there's a bunch of different types of these available okay and it just depends on what you're doing so I hope I covered everything um, that is the overview of what types of fuel uh, of how what fuel regulators there are out there what types they are and how they're used and when you would use them. The ones that can be changed, I'll give you an overview again. Okay. The ones that can be altered are this one. And this one, as far as going in between natural gas and propane, this one can be adjusted. Let me flip this back again. Let me restate that. The ones, there's one here that's fixed that cannot be altered, which is this one. The ones that can be altered between natural gas and propane are this one and this one. Okay. And they're, they're actually, uh, this one's here set for four inches of natural gas. 10 inches of LP. This one's for 5 inches of natural gas, 10 inches of LP. And I have seen these in 4 and 10 also combinations. <laughs> the ones that, uh, this one can can be adjusted 
to adjust for LP only, since it's 5 to 12 inches of water column. And if it were the natural gas version of it, again, that would say 3 inches to 6 inches of water column. Okay, And it can be adjusted also by pulling off the snout here and then making that adjustment below. This one here is fixed. Again, it says 11.0 inches of water column on here. Uh, which is kind of unusual because it matches this one here. Typically, you know, uh, I'm used to seeing 10 inches of water column, but that's what this one is set at. And it goes on one of these big guys, one of those. Okay. Now, uh, there's one more thing I might show you here. Okay. And that is verifying what a regulator does. Now, I don't ever verify what a regulator does. I don't want to get into doing that. I don't want to quality check anything. You know, I, I send these off. These are done to industry standards. They should be set. If something's wrong, I send, I send another one out to a customer, you know. But typically, if you do need to verify what your pressure is set at, let's say you have one of these guys, right, and you absolutely have to verify, and you're a professional, right, which I'm, I seriously doubt I'm talking to anybody who's a professional. But anyway, you can get one of these little guys here, a manometer, and that will tell you by hooking up, uh, by doing different hookups, what the output of one of these regulators is. This one reads in 10 different scales. So, you know, it'll read water, water column. It'll read, you know, there's just a bunch of different standards that are used for uh, gas settings. And this one here has 10 different scales on it. It can be flipped back and forth. It's got little buttons on the side. You can record scenarios of spikes and drops and stuff like that. You know, a pretty technical tool that's not really going to be necessary for somebody just doing a gas conversion in their own kitchen. I hope this video helps and uh, it certainly clarifies what types of regulators there are out there and which and what the adjustments are, if any, and which ones can be adjusted, which ones can't be adjusted. Thanks for watching the video.